Hi everyone. Welcome to the sixth lecture of the series on sliding mode control. In this lecture, we discuss about higher order sliding mode control. Here is the overview. We start with a brief introduction to higher order sliding mode control. Then we discuss about Zeno phenomenon, which is a concept used in many of the higher order SMC approaches. In higher order sliding mode control or HOSMC, the control input U appears in the higher derivatives of the sliding variable S. So in general, we can consider a single input nonlinear system as in equation number one. And the sliding variable is chosen as the output error as in equation number two. Let the control input U appears in the rth derivative of the sliding variable S. Then the rth derivative of S can be written as in equation number three, in which the rth order derivative is denoted by S raised to R dot. And it will be in the form of A of Tx plus B of Tx into U. So here we have the control input U appears in the rth order derivative of the sliding variable. Therefore, by properly selecting the control input U, we can make the sliding variable S equal to zero. In other words, we can make Y is equal to YR, where YR is the reference output. In higher order sliding mode control, we consider the value of R as greater than or equal to two. So this results in schemes like second order sliding mode control, third order sliding mode control, and so on. Now in the rth derivative of the sliding variable, we assume the terms A and B are bounded for which the bounds are as given in equation number four. Using these bounds, we can rewrite the rth derivative of the sliding variable as a differential inclusion as in equation number five, which is obtained by using the bounds for A and B. This basically implies that the rth derivative of the sliding variable will be in this interval. Now there exist many higher order SMC approaches using which we can design this control input U, which can stabilize this differential inclusion. Or in other words, it can make the sliding variable s equal to zero if s raised to r dot satisfies this bound. Next, we discuss about Zeno phenomenon, which mostly occurs in the case of switched and hybrid systems. In the case of higher order SMC, the control input switches from one value to another value. Therefore, the resultant system has a switched dynamics. Here we discuss the Zeno phenomenon with an example which is called as the bouncing ball and it considers the dynamics of a ball bouncing on the floor under the action of gravitational force. Let h is the height of the ball and v is its velocity. Then the dynamics of the ball between the impact time is defined by equation number six. Where we have h dot is equal to v and v dot is equal to minus g where g is the acceleration due to gravity. Here this minus sign appears and its acceleration due to gravity appears in the downward direction. Also, we consider at the time of impact, the velocity of the ball changes as per equation number seven, where V of TA plus is the velocity of the ball after it hits the ground and V of TA minus is the velocity of the ball before it hits the ground. And R is called as the restitution coefficient, which takes a value between zero and one. After hitting the ground, the velocity of the ball changes the direction. So that's why we have this minus sign appears here. Now by combining these two equation, we obtain the dynamics of a bouncing ball. Here we can simplify this dynamics by normalizing these variables. And we define the normalized state variables as x1 equal to h by g and x2 equal to v by g. And this will result in x1 dot equal to x2 and x2 dot equal to minus 1. Here we have x2 dot is equal to v dot by g and we have v dot is equal to minus g. So this g and g will cancel and it will give us minus one. And similarly we have x2 of t plus equal to minus r into x2 of t minus. If we exclude this part, here we can see that this dynamics is in the form of a double integrator system with a control input equal to minus one. Now by integrating this state equation, we obtain x2 of t is equal to minus t plus t zero plus x2 zero, where x2 zero is the initial value of the state x2 and t zero is the initial time. And if we integrate x2, we get x1. So this will give x1 as this time square by two plus this time into t minus t zero plus x1 zero, where x1 zero is the initial value of the state x1. Now by substituting x1 zero is equal to zero and x2 zero is equal to one in this equation, we get x2 of t and x1 of t as in equation number 10. 
So here we can see that x2 is changing linearly with time and x1 is changing quadratically with time. Now from the previous equation, we can see that x1 of t is equal to 0 at t equal to t0 plus 2. And we have x0 of t0 plus 2 minus will be equal to minus 1. So therefore, x0 of t0 plus 2 plus will be minus r into minus 1. So this will be equal to plus r. Now if we replace t0 with t0 plus 2 and x1 0 with 0 and x2 0 with r in this equation, we obtain equation number 12. Here we can see that x2 will be a linear function of time and x1 will be a quadratic function of time. Here if we substitute x1 of t equal to 0 and solve for t, we obtain t is equal to t0 plus 2 plus 2r. Therefore, x1 of t is equal to 0 and t is equal to t0 plus 2 plus 2r. And if we substitute that in x2, we can have x2 of t0 plus 2 plus 2r plus will be equal to r square. Therefore, we can observe that the switching times or the time instant when x1 of t or the height h is equal to 0 forms a sequence like a t0, t0 plus 2, t0 plus 2 plus 2r and so on. And since the value of the restitution coefficient r is strictly less than 1, these switching times will have a finite accumulation point as in equation number 14. Here this accumulation time t is obtained by summing this series which gives t0 plus sigma k equal to 0 to infinity 2r is to k. And the summation of this series will be equal to 2 by 1 minus r, where we use the results from basic geometric progression. Here since r is strictly less than 1, this will be a finite time, so we have a finite accumulation time. And the phenomenon characterized by finite accumulation of the state trajectories to some point in the state space is called Zeno phenomenon. And in the bouncing ball case, we can show that the straight trajectory will converge to origin in a finite time. Therefore, the bouncing ball exhibits Zeno phenomenon. And this figure shows the states and straight trajectory in the case of bouncing ball, where this is the plot of the state x1, or which is the height of the ball, and this is the plot of the state x2, which is the velocity, and this is the plot of the state trajectory, which shows x1 versus x2. We have observed that in between the switching instance, the state x1 will be a quadratic function of time and the state x2 will be a linear function of time. That's why we obtain the plot of x1 and x2 like this. And we also observe that whenever x1 becomes 0 or the height becomes 0, the velocity switches from a negative value to a positive value. This is basically because the ball changes its direction from going downwards to going upwards. Here we have considered the initial time instant as 0. So you can see the switching times as 2, 2 plus 2r, 2 plus 2r plus 2r square and so on. And this plot shows the state trajectory of the bouncing ball, where we can see the state trajectory starts from 0, 1, and it follows this parabola to reach 0, minus 1. And from here it switches to 0, r, and it again follows this parabola and it reaches 0, minus r. And from here it switches to 0, r square. And it goes like this and eventually converges to 0, 0 in a finite time. The concept of Zeno phenomenon is used in many of the higher order sliding mode control approaches, and this we will discuss in the upcoming lectures. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.